Giuseppe Joe the Boss Masseria was gunned down and killed on April the 15th, 1931. His murder was a landmark moment for the American Mafia in the early 20th century. Let's check out a few myths and theories that surround the famous gangland slaying. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at a few myths and theories around the murder of Joe the Boss Masseria. Joe the Boss was murdered at Nuova Villa Tamaro restaurant in Coney Island on April 15, 1931. Most documentaries and books state that before Masseria was shot to death, he had gorged himself with a large meal. As Joe Bonanno writes in his autobiography, Joe Masseria was shot to death in a restaurant. He had just finished a big meal. He died on full stomach and that leads me to believe he died happy. Selwyn Raab writes in his book Five Families that Masseria had gone to Coney Island for a lavish lobster lunch. John H. Davis in his book Mafia Dynasty writes that Joe the Boss was sedated with linguine, veal scallopini and red wine. However, the autopsy performed by Dr. G. W. Roger states that Masseria had died with minimal food content in his stomach and only two ounces of bile. Much of the misinformation around Masseria's death comes from the book The Last Testament of Lucky Luciano, a book written supposedly largely in Luciano's own words. However, since it was published in the early 70s, the book has been heavily debunked and the credibility of the co-authors Richard Hammer and Martin Gosch questioned. The Last Testament of Lucky Luciano states of Joe the Boss's final meal, Masseria gorged himself on antipasto, spaghetti with red clam sauce, lobster fra diavolo, a quart of Chianti. He was still eating when most of the other diners had departed. He still had ahead of him cream-filled pastry and strong Italian coffee. It took him about three hours to finish that meal. If Masseria had indeed eaten all of this, then it would be impossible for the autopsy to state that he had minimal food content inside his stomach. It is also commonly documented that Charlie Luciano was present in the restaurant when Joe the Boss was assassinated. The story being that Luciano was playing cards with Masseria, then excused himself to go to the bathroom, and that the gunman then entered the premises and murdered Joe the Boss. Again, the controversial book The Last Testament of Lucky Luciano writes that Charlie Lucky emerged from the lavatory, took a look at the dead Masseria, called the police and waited for them to arrive. When the cops come, naturally, they wanted to know whether I'd seen what happened. I said no, I didn't, and I didn't have no idea why somebody would want to kill Joe. They asked me where I was when it happened, and every newspaper printed that I said, as soon as I finished drying my hands, I walked out to see what it was all about. That's an absolute lie. I said to them, I was in the can taking a leak. I always take a long leak. However, as mentioned, this book is open to scrutiny, despite the fact that Martin Gosch, one of the authors, did meet several times with Luciano in the early 1960s. In the version in the book, Luciano allegedly says that all the newspapers misprinted what he had told the police. From reviewing all of the stories in the newspapers around that time, including, amongst many others, the New York Times, Brooklyn Eagle and Daily News, not one newspaper mentions Luciano in any form. In addition, other historians have noted that no record of Luciano speaking with the police can be found. Some speculate that this cast doubt as to whether Luciano was present at all. There appears, however, little doubt from multiple inside sources that it was Luciano who orchestrated Masseria's murder. Influential mobster Nicola Gentile wrote in his autobiography that immediately after the shooting at the restaurant where he was allegedly late for the meeting, he went straight from the crime scene to Luciano's Manhattan residence. 
here a meeting took place between Gentile, Luciano and Vincenzo Troia. According to Gentile, Luciano said, Vincenzo, tell your compare Maranzano that we killed Masseria not to serve him, but for our own personal reasons. Some take this account as a sign that Luciano wasn't at the restaurant at all, but was at his residence awaiting the result of the planned assassination. Ultimately, there is every chance that Charlie Luciano was at the restaurant meeting with Masseria, especially as he was one of Joe the Boss's top men. So, who are the other mobsters who are speculated to have been present at the restaurant meeting with Masseria the day he was murdered? One person that historians believe may have been at the fateful meeting with Masseria was Severio Sam Palaccia. I cover Palaccia's life and career in further detail in a previous video. Palaccia was considered to be Masseria's chief advisor. According to reports, his coat was found at the crime scene. He was picked up by police and questioned for hours with regards to the famous gangland murder. As one paper reported, Palaccia, 35, who lives at 3428 76th Street, Corona, and says he runs an olive oil business on Mott Street, Manhattan, was picked up at 3am by detectives Charles Corbett and Louis Dardis of Brooklyn headquarters. One of the three coats left behind by the three men who sat in the fatal card game is said to belong to Palaccia. Police say he took Joe to the restaurant to talk reason to a Coney Island policy racket backer who curtly had refused to come through with a protection cut to Joe. Another mobster believed to have been present was Johnny Silkstockings Zustra. Some sources have Johnny Silkstockings down as working with Vincent Mangano in Brooklyn. However, other sources have Zustra as a rival to Mangano, particularly in rackets relating to the laundry business. Police connected Johnny Silk Stockings with the meeting and murder due to the fact that they found an overcoat allegedly belonging to him hanging up in the restaurant. Some historians speculate that Johnny Silk Stockings Justra was one of the shooters of Joe the Boss. However, it would seem very sloppy for the gunman to leave his coat behind. It is perhaps more likely that Johnny Silk Stockings was at the meeting and card game and then fled in a hurry when the shooting began. Interestingly, two weeks after Joe the Boss's murder, Johnny Silk Stockings was gunned down himself, as reported in the Daily News. Johnny was shot to death Sunday night in front of 75 Monroe Street, Manhattan, where he had been summoned by a telephone call from a girl. Johnny Silk Stockings Eustra's funeral was larger than that of Frankie Yell's lavish send-off in 1928. Perhaps an indication of the rarely discussed gangster's power and popularity at the time. The papers reported, Frankie Uale must have turned over in his bronze sarcophagus in Cavalry Cemetery this morning. For Brooklyn Gangdom, over which he once ruled, struck a new note in pomp and circumstance, in lavish outlay for floral tribute, in costly bronze coffin, and in the extent of the vehicular entourage which wended its way to the final resting place of another gang leader. Up to date, the Uwale funeral had been pointed to as the acme of gangland's florid gesture in saying Ave to a fallen chief. But today, friends and relatives of Johnny Justra, slain last Monday in a Manhattan tenement by unidentified enemies, flaunted in the face of the Uwale clan the fact that silk stocking Johnny Justra topped Frank Uwale, his bitter enemy, even in death. 18 cars loaded with flowers followed the hearse from the Church of the Sacred Heart, Hicks and DeGraw Streets, and behind, 132 funeral cars followed. A gigantic heart with a dagger thrust bloodily through it dominated the floral pieces. Its donor remained anonymous. One FBI file from 1963 has an informant stating the following. Masseria, who was to have a restaurant meeting with his immediate supporters, including Joe Biondo, Vincenzo Mangano, Niccolò Gentile and Toto La Verde was killed in a restaurant in Coney Island. Joe Biondo was an extremely close ally of Charlie Luciano, 
but would carve out a successful career in the future Gambino family, becoming Carlo Gambino's underboss. Toto Laverde was Salvatore Laverde, an influential Chicago-based mobster. And Nicola Gentile, a respected mobster who had travelled to different cities in the United States running illegal operations and acting as an advisor to many crime families. Vincenzo Mangano, better known as Vincent Mangano, would go on to head his own family for 20 years, before being murdered by his underboss, Albert Anastasia. Interestingly, according to one informant, a few months before the famous gangland murder, Vincent Mangano had been assigned the task of killing Joe the Boss by Giuseppe Trainer and a committee of influential mobsters, as per the following FBI file. Trainer, after the committee's release, made a recommendation that to end the war, it would be necessary to have Vincenzo Mangano kill Masseria because Masseria had complete trust in him. He managed to get the majority of the committee to agree with him. Some sources, including Joe Valacci, state that Masseria was sat with Vito Genovese and Ciro Terranova, who were both accompanying Charlie Luciano to the meeting. Another name that the press at the time linked with being at the meeting was Anthony Little Orgi Pisano Cofano. However, all of the mobsters just discussed in this section are plausible candidates to have been present at the meeting just before Masseria was killed. So, who were the gunmen who riddled Masseria with bullets? Most documentaries and books state that Masseria was shot and killed by a hit team made up of Vito Genovese, Bugsy Siegel, Joe Adonis and Albert Anastasia. For those who follow Mafia history, this would appear to be a fascinating lineup of mobsters who would all go on to have an impact on organised crime in America. Again, this theory seems to have come from a questionable source, the book The Last Testament of Lucky Luciano, which states, The car that Luciano had driven from Manhattan had been followed at a discreet distance by a black limousine, driven by Chira Terranova and carrying Vito Genovese, Joe Adonis, Albert Anastasia and Bugsy Siegel. Those four burst into the restaurant, pulled out pistols and began firing at Joe the boss. More than 20 shots ricocheted around the room, six smashing directly into Masseria, who slumped over the table face down, his blood stained with white tablecloth. In his right hand dangled the Ace of Diamonds. This story can be questioned on a couple of points. Firstly, eyewitnesses state that it was only two gunmen who entered the restaurant, not four as shown in several newspapers, including the Brooklyn Eagle. Masseria was playing cards in the back room of the Nuova Villa Tamara with three other men at three o'clock yesterday afternoon, when a blue sedan drove up to the door and two men leapt out. Walking directly through the restaurant, the men disappeared into the rear room. Instantly, there came the sounds of several shots. Leaving by a side door and throwing their weapons away, the men entered their machine and disappeared. Casting further doubts around the theory of these four gunmen is the suggestion that Albert Anastasia wasn't present at all. Noted mob historian Tom Jones writes that Anastasia had a cast iron alibi for the time of the Masseria hit. Anastasia was in the law offices of attorney Samuel S. Leibovitz and actually asked the receptionist at the time before waiting for Leibovitz to return from court. Leibovitz would go on to become a judge who is known to be particularly harsh on mobsters. I've covered this theory in a previous video. Ultimately, Genovese, Adonis, Siegel and Anastasia were all capable mobsters who would not have hesitated when requested by Luciano to kill Joe the Boss Masseria. But this theory does appear to be too good to be true. Genovese soldier turned informer Joe Valacci would later testify that Masseria had been set up by Charlie Luciano and Vito Genovese. He states that Luciano, Genovese and Ciro Terranova were in the restaurant. In the FBI file, he relays who the shooters were. He said, Frank Lavorsi and Joseph Stracci, also known as Joe Stretch, who did the killing while he sat at the table. 
Frank Lavorsi and Joseph Stracci were noted gunmen in the East Harlem crew of Chiro Terranova, with Lavorsi especially known to be close with Charlie Luciano. This version tallies up with witnesses stating that two gunmen entered the restaurant. Although in Valacci's full account, he seems to indicate that Stracci and Lavorsi were already present. With regards to Masseria's wounds, the autopsy showed that he had been hit with five shots. Four times in the back and once in the back of his head, exiting out of his eye. As historian Tom Jones notes, Two of the four back shots were through and through, as was the head shot. Two of the shots to the back had smudged the coat jacket with gunpowder, indicating the shooter was only inches away. Heart, lungs and liver were torn apart. Brain was shredded. Two lead bullets were recovered, both 38 calibre. Let me know your thoughts on the identities of the gunman in the comments below. Another common story about Joe the Boss is that he was a slob and poorly dressed. However, his attire on the day he was murdered suggests different. It was reported that he was wearing light grey three-piece suit by Vincent Belletta matched to a white madras shirt by Henry and Al New York. Black leather belt with silver buckle. His size six feet in black Oxfords and blue cotton socks. Underneath, cream silk underwear. So, why was Joe the Boss having a meeting at the Coney Island restaurant? Some sources, such as the Last Testament of Lucky Luciano, state that Joe Masseria was lured to the Nuova Villa by Luciano, so Charlie Lucky could outline his plan to kill Salvatore Maranzano. This may well be the case, especially if you subscribe to the theory that Charlie Luciano was present at the 15th of April meeting. However, FBI files from an informant show an interesting twist on the usual narrative. The violence of the Catamarese War had caused a lot of adverse publicity. And the FBI file states, Newspaper publicity, according to NYT2, caused public uproar and the result was an order from the police of New York to Masseria to end the strife or all would be arrested. This caused Masseria to consider peace and he did not give any more orders to his men to use arms, while Maranzano stepped up his activities. And interestingly, according to well-connected mobster Nicola Gentile in his book Vita di Capa Mafia, there was an alleged peace meeting scheduled between Joe Masseria and Salvatore Maranzano. Joe the boss allegedly planned to step down honourably. Maranzano had been under pressure from senior figures in the honoured society such as Gaspar Messina to find a peaceful resolution. They had even set up a commission for peace. This is something that Salvatore Maranzano was very much against. He demanded that Joe Masseria be killed. As an informant told the FBI, Another assembly was convened with about 500 members attending presided over by Gaspar Messina of Boston. But due to the opposition of a group led by Niccolò Gentile, no decision was reached as to Maranzano's demands. Maranzano was furious with the failure to grant his demands. This has led some to suggest that Masseria was having a meeting in Coney Island to discuss his peace plans with several of his men. However, allegedly, according to various sources, Charlie Luciano and his followers had decided that Joe Masseria had to go regardless. Finally, an interesting fact to note relating to the death of Joe the Boss is that just a couple of weeks after his murder, his 19-year-old daughter Vettina also died. The Daily News reported, Vettina Masseria, 19-year-old daughter of Joseph Joe the Boss Masseria, underworld figure who was shot to death in a Coney Island cafe on April 15th, will be buried today. The girl who died Friday night, her death hastened by grief at the Masseria home, 15 West 81st Street, will be given a requiem high mass at 10.30am at the Church of Mary Help of Christians, 434 East 12th Street. The girl became ill two weeks ago. Her condition was aggravated by her grief over the father's murder, members of the family said yesterday. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.